Hey guys, Mr. Kennedy back with yet another video. This is going to be on community ecology and specifically on community interactions, how animals interact with one another within their community. Now, if we look at interspecific interactions, these are interactions of individuals of other species in the community. So, how individuals of different species interact, such as competition, herbivory, predation, and we often use a plus-minus system to show the interaction of two species like to show if it benefits or detracts or doesn't benefit or harms the other species. Now, the first community interaction I want to talk about is competition. There is interspecific competition, which is actually a negative on both individuals. Uh, it's competition for a limited resource, such as grasshopper and bison in the Great Plains. They're both competing for the grass that they eat, but when the bison eats it, it has a detrimental effect on the grasshopper population, and when the grasshopper eats it, it has a detrimental effect on the bison population. Hence, both of them negative. Now, there is what we call the competitive exclusion theory, uh, which if you have two species that are eating or, or competing for the same resource, eventually one will outcompete the other, and that will lead to the elimination of the one that is not as good at competing. So you have a reproductive ad advantage by one uh, compared to the other. So you have a flood of that number of species. Now, two things I want to mention down here. Ecological niche or niche is a species um, use of biotic and abiotic resources. A niche is basically um, what the organism does or where um, its job in the population. Like, for example, a bee's niche would be to pollinate the flowers. Um, a predator's niche might be to eliminate um, sick or uh, old animals from a certain population. Next thing I want to make attention to is resource partitioning. It means that differentiation of the niches that allow similar species to coexist. So two species that do s the same things might not have to compete if they live in different areas and use the resources differently so they may they may both be successful so you don't have this interspecific competition that we mentioned earlier uh, next is predation predation is going to benefit the predator and it's going to be negative to the prey now oftentimes when we think about it we think about like the lion antelope example but realize that a rabbit and a cabbage the rabbit would be the predator the cabbage would be the prey so it can, can be that way now, animals have developed uh, different mechanisms, uh, and this should say display, to counteract the predator-prey relationship. One is called cryptic coloration, in which is camouflage. Animals can hide so they avoid being eaten. eaten. Now, realize some predators use this as well. Um, Opposmatic coloration, which is warring colors. Realize it doesn't do you any good to get eaten, and then the organism realizes you're, you're poisonous. So having bright colors, well, warning colors would be one way to have a defense mechanism. Um, Batesian uh, mimicry is when harmless animals look like the more harmful animals. So if I was a butterfly and I looked like a monarch butterfly, animals are not going to eat me because they know that a monarch is distasteful. Um, Mullerian mimicry is when two or more uh, animals that are both harmful, uh, unpalatable, both have the same coloration. By having similar looks, then they increase the number of, of prey that they that look like them, so they increase the likelihood that they're not going to be eaten because predators have probably come in contact with them. Now realize some predators actually use this mimicry as well. Um, example would be like in the alligator snapping turtle. You see this little uh, tongue-like structure here. Uh, it actually will wiggle it, you know, back and forth, which will uh, sit there with its mouth open. And as you can see over here, if it's sitting here wiggling this, it's like a bait. And the fish, when it comes next to its mouth, it chomps it down. So realize predators are using some of these same techniques. Um, next would be herbivory. Herbivory is positive for the one that the herbivore, and it's negative for the plant. And herbivory is when any organism eats any part of a plant or an algae, like a cow, a grasshopper, or a beetle. A sheep. Um, now realize that herbivores have special adaptations for this. They have, you know, a specialized teeth, which we've already spoken about, a specialized digestive system. It's usually longer in the herbivore. Um, 
They may eat only a particular part of the plant, and they may even have receptors on their feet, if they're like the beetles or grasshoppers, that recognize toxic and non-toxic plants so that they don't eat the toxic plants. Okay, the next one is symbiosis, and this is when two or more species are living together, and they can have different effects, such as in parasitism, one organism benefits and the other is harmed. The one that's benefiting is the parasite, and the host is the one that's being harmed. There's two types of parasites. There's endoparasites and ectoparasites. Endoparasites are like tapeworm. They're inside your body, feeding on you. Ectoparasites are like on the outside. Now, this is a tobacco cornworm that has parasitic wasp laying its, laying its eggs on it. This is an endoparasite because the worms actually bore into the, the, ta um, the cornworm, uh, tobacco hornworm, and eat it from the inside out and eventually kill the, the uh, hornworm whenever they explode out. The next one is mutualism. Mutualism is where both organisms benefit, uh, such as the sea anemone and the clownfish here. You know, the clownfish gets protection, the sea anemone uh, gets food because things chase the clownfish back to the sea anemone. Uh, there's actually two types of mutualism. There's obligate mutualism which it has to be there in order for the organism to survive, such as termites have microbes in their gut that allow them to break down um, wood. If they didn't have these microbes, they would die. So that's an obligate mutualism. And then there's a facultative mutualism, like um, there's a certain plant and an ant, uh, the acea and the plant and the ant, they actually live independently of one another, but when they live together, uh, they survive much better. That's a facultative. They actually promote uh, survival. Um, the next one is commensalism, and usually think of this as hitchhiker species, like birds on the top, on the backs of certain types of animals. Uh, one organism benefits, like the little birdies benefiting from protection. It also gets food that's rustled up by the feet of these oxen. Um, the oxen really doesn't get anything out of it. And I think it's actually a wildebeest. But anyway, that's the three types of symbi symbiosis. The last one is uh, facilitation. Facilitation can be either benefit both species or benefit one and not harm the other and usually think of this in plant ecology and the species have a positive effect on the survival of another species even though they don't live in close direct contact so it's not really like a symbiosis um, facilitation would be like a plant that uh, keeps salt from building up in a marsh that will allow another plant to be able to survive in the marsh so you know even though they don't live in direct contact with each other that then they help each other. All right, I hope this helps you a little bit and I will talk to you soon.